Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 12. In this tutorial, we will look at how to account for sales discounts under two methods, the net method and the gross method. There are two learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to review the treatment of sales discounts, including the journal entries and income statement presentation under both the net method and the gross method. This tutorial is based on the Seinfeld Systems example. There is no accompanying file for this. The data is short enough to include in the slide, so you do not need to download any additional information. And our requirements are going to be first to prepare the journal entries to account for sales discounts under both the net and gross methods. And the second requirement will be to prepare partial income statements under both methods. So we begin with our first requirement under the net method. The first journal entry that we need to do on August the 1st is to record the sales. So we will debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue for 500 units at a price of $1,200. And we record that net of the discount, but the net method approach presumes that the discount will be taken. So the sales and the accounts receivable are recorded net of the discount or after the discount. That gives us 588,000. Effectively, what we're doing here is recording the accounts receivable at its net realizable value immediately. And the net sales are recorded, assuming the discount will be taken. Remember that with any uh, product sales journal entry, there is always the associated entry to record the cost of goods sold and a credit to inventory. And the cost on these units is a total of $500,000, so 500 units at a cost of $1,000. Then we are told the customer pays 200,000 of the total account receivable on the sale in the discount period. So what we must do then is debit cash for the portion of the sales that has paid for in the discount period and multiply that by the after discount amount. So the customer is paying off a total of 200,000 and taking the discount off, so only remitting a net of $196,000. And then on August 31st, the remainder of the receivable is paid. So we can first credit accounts receivable for the remaining amount. And if we look at our previous entries, we have a debit to accounts receivable of 588 and a credit here of 196. And these are where these numbers arise. And if you wanted to keep track of a T account for that, just for the sale, we have a $588,000 debit and $196,000 in collections on that account, leaving a balance of 392,000, which of course must be reduced to zero. So we need a credit of 392,000. Then what we do is multiply the remaining 400,000 because the total sale would have been 600,000 if no discount was taken. And 200,000 was paid within the discount period, leaving a balance or an amount of 400,000. And if we multiply that, of course, by the 2%, this is the amount of discounts that are forfeited. So if the discounts were not taken, the sales would have been $600,000. But because it was presumed that the sales discounts would be taken, the sale and the accounts receivable is reported net of the discount, but the discount was only taken on a portion, on $200,000. So the amount of sales discounts that are forfeited is 2% of the remaining $400,000 that the customer chose not to pay within the early discount period. And the corresponding debit then to cash is for $400,000. You could have easily have used this number first because that's how much the undiscounted amount of the receivable would be. So you could start with $400,000 and then credit the accounts receivable for the balance that's left on that account. And then you could have used a plug or calculated value for the $8,000. The sales discounts forfeited that $8,000 in essence represents additional revenue for discounts not taken. And it's treated this way because the original sale was reported net of the discount. So this $8,000 effectively increases the sales revenue. But to allow management to track sales discounts forfeited, we keep track of this in a separate account instead of burying it in sales revenue because management wants to know how much is taken in discounts and how much in discounts are forfeited. And now we will proceed with requirement 1B, which is accounting for the sales under the gross method. On August 1st, we still have a journal entry, but you'll notice here, instead of debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales for the amount after the discount, we record the sales and receivable at the full amount. 
and of course the cost of goods sold in inventory at its cost. Then on August 11th, the customer chooses to pay $200,000 of the total $600,000 in receivable within the discount period. So if we wanted to use a T account to track this, we have the original $600,000. And now the customer is paying off $200,000 of that, leaving a $400,000 receivable. But the amount being remitted is $196,000 because the 2% discount. So we need to credit the receivable for $200,000, which is the amount before the discount, and the sales discount of course is a calculated value or is simply 200,000 times 2%. So the sales discount is a calculated value of this times 2%, or if you know the cash and the accounts receivable, you can just plug the difference. And the sales discount is a contra account to sales, as opposed to sales discounts forfeited, which serves to increase sales. The sales discount account, of course, decreases sales. And then the last journal entry on the 31st is to record the collection of the remaining receivable. As calculated before, we determined that the receivable on that sale is the original 600000 in sales minus the 200000 taken in the discount period. So cash is debited, accounts receivable credited, and the sale is completely dealt with. We can now move on to requirement two, which is to present what the income statements would look like. Because this is a short requirement, we can present both the net method and the gross method on one slide so we can see the difference. Recalling that under the net method, we recorded the sales net of the discount of 588,000. And then through all the other work, we determined that the sales discounts forfeited were 8,000 because the customer only took discounts on a portion of the total sale. So the net sales in this case is 596,000. The cost of goods is 500,000, leaving gross profit on this particular sale of $96,000. Well, if we look at the gross method, the gross profit is still the same. It's still $96,000 and the net sales are still $596,000. The difference is in how the discounts appear and how they're allocated to the sales and sales discounts accounts. Because the net method presumes the discount will be taken, the sales are lowered by the full amount of the sales discount and then increased by the amount of the sales discounts forfeited. In the gross method, the sales are recorded the full value and then reduced by the amount of the sales discounts taken. In either case, there is only $4,000 in discounts that are taken by the customer. It's just the difference lies in how the company chooses to account for the sales discounts. And now for some key points to remember. First, if management expects sales discounts to be taken, then the accounts receivable and the sales should be recorded at the net realizable value using the net method. As a result, any discounts not taken are added to sales as sales discounts forfeited. This approach would make the most sense if management offers discounts on a regular basis and customers take discounts on a regular basis and a large proportion of the sales are collected after the discount, then conservatism would basically support the choice to record at the NRV. Alternatively, if management does not anticipate sales discounts to be taken, then the AR and sales should be recorded at the full amount. And any sales discounts that are taken would just be treated as sales discounts, which is a contra account to sales. So even though discounts are offered, if customers take them irregularly and few and far between, then there is no reason to anticipate a large proportion of discounts to be taken. And therefore, it might not make sense for management to record the sales net of the discount. And so this concludes tutorial 12 on accounting for sales discounts. We hope you found it useful.